Hello everyone. Uh, in this video, I am going to demonstrate uh, an activity based on the normal distribution. So for that, firstly, I am going to open an Excel file with a blank sheet. Okay. So our topic is uh, based on the normal distribution. So firstly, we need to uh, generate a data which is uh, which actually following our normal distribution. So for that, uh, I firstly go to the option of data, and then. Uh, I need to select the option of data analysis. Uh, basically, this is the add-in uh, uh, data analysis tool pack. If this option is not available there, then how can you add this option? So for that, you need to go to the file and then options and click on add-ins. You will find out here analysis tool pack is available here or not. If it is not here. Then you can click on this go option, and you need to select this option of analysis tool pack and analysis tool pack PB, and then click OK. Then you will find out this option here. So, so the first step uh, I am going to follow here to generate the normal distribution data. So for that I click on the data analysis, and then I need to select the option of random number generation. So here, firstly, I am interested to generate a data of one variables. And, uh, suppose that uh, I am expecting the number of observation be one thousand, and I want to generate a data which actually follow normal distribution. So uh, we know that uh, in normal distribution we have a two parameters, uh, mean and variance, or you can say mean or standard deviation. So let us suppose that uh, I want to generate a data whose mean is say five. And uh, standard deviation is say two. Okay, and I want to see the output of this data here in the second entry here, and name this as a data. Okay, so I want to analyze this data. Data, so you will find out here uh, the data is available in the form of a decimal form. So it is like a continuous data. To analyze this data, uh, again I firstly go to the option of data analysis, and firstly I want to check the descriptive statistics of this data. So then I click OK. So firstly I am going to select the input range. Input range means uh, the given data. So to select the entire 1000 observation, so click on the first uh, option cell, and then. You can select the option Control plus Shift plus Down key. It will directly select all the input range. If you will uh, here, you can see here the data is selected from A to. I skip the very first term because uh, I label this data as a data only. Okay. So if I start my data from A one only, then I need to. Select the option of label also. Okay. Uh, then uh, where I want to see the output, uh, I want to see the output here in the C cell C one. So if I click, uh, but what I want to see here, I want to see the summary statistics of this data. Then I click OK. So we will get the complete summary of this data. Like the mean of this data is uh, 5.03. Like we have already constructed this data, where we have given the input that I'm expecting the mean of the data is 5 and the standard deviation is 2. So this data is generated here by this information only. And uh, what important information here we have, because I want to analyze this data is uh, what is the minimum value, what is the maximum value, and what is the range of this data. Okay. to analyze this data uh, with the help of the histogram only so firstly we need to construct a bin of this data right so for bin uh, i need to select the entire data so we find out here the minimum value is minus 2 point something and the maximum value is 12.48 something right and the range of the data is 14.52 so i need to uh, select the bin size in such a way so that uh, it will cover the minimum value to the maximum value and we should have at least uh, 10 to 20 partitions we are expecting all right 
so for example if i am expecting say 20 partitions so the range is 14 right so 14 if i divide it with 20 so it means that i need to consider the uh, width between the two consecutive value of the uh, bin is, is 0 0.71 right so if i select this particular one then we can get 20 partitions but it is up to us that either we are expecting 20 partition for example if i want to do 14 uh, partitions only then in that case uh, we can get the width as one only right so according to that only we can choose that what kind of input we are expecting here in the bin region right okay so for that now let us uh, start with the data okay let me clear this information so my minimum value is minus 2 so it means that i start with the value here minus 2 so if i am uh, want the 20 partitions so in that case i need to consider the width between the two consecutive point as uh, 0 0.7 so if i use this then i can use the formula previous term plus 0 0.7 and with the help of this i can generate this data and the maximum value is 12.48 so i need to move accordingly so that we should have the partitions up to the 20 observations so 12.7 is the maximum value and the minimum value is minus 2 because otherwise this value is minus 2.04 okay or i can start it with uh, minus 3 also okay or minus 2.07 okay minus 2 point mm, for example I can start with minus 2.7 so in that case accordingly we can get the data okay, so I need to move to the next term only right so the next step is I need to find out the frequency of this particular data also. To find out the frequency again I need to use the command of histogram in the data analysis. So for that I go to the data and then click on the data analysis option. And here we this time we are going to select the option of histogram and then click OK. So this time our input range is the entire data. Control plus shift plus down key it will select the complete data of the input range and the second one is the bin range so this time i need to select the bin range control shift down so there are about 23 observation we have in this data and the next step is where i want to see the output range uh, i want to see the output range in the very next cell okay so for that uh, let us suppose i select this particular cell and then click ok so we can get this bin and the frequency ok so we find that the total count of this observation is thousand so if we want to verify about this data then we can use the command of sum here the sum of these frequency should be 1000 so let us verify so i'm using the command of sum so its value from x2 to h24 that means if i select this entire column then the sum should be 1000 okay so it verify it means that yes uh, the data is correct now to verify the same so i am going to check one i am going to calculate the probability using the direct formula the direct formula for calculating the probability is the direct formula for the probability of the observation so in that case we can use the formula of px as the frequency upon the total sum of the frequency because the sum of the frequency is denoted by capital N also so I am going to use this formula ok so if I use this formula here then this is equal to this is the frequency 
divided by the sum of the frequency so the sum of the frequency is 1000 so even i can select this cell but in this case i need to add this dollar sign because every time this value remain fixed so now if i click on tab then you will get the probability i am assuming this bin value as the value of x ok so now if i simply click on this one double click then you will get all the probabilities and we know that the sum of the probabilities is always equal to 1 basically it is a proportion ok so the total proportion is always equal to 1 only so we will get this value now the next step is i am going to calculate the probability using the normal distribution formula so the formula of the normal distribution is equal to n o r n dot t a s t this is the formula for normal distribution so for this formula what is the input required firstly we need to add x so i am assuming here x as the bin value so this is our x but uh, you can see here our data is in a discrete form right so when the data is in a discrete form then the formula for the probability we know that in uh, normal distribution is a continuous distribution so in that case uh, if you want to find out the probability at a point in case of continuous distribution it is zero okay so but if we are uh, recording uh, the value at any point so if i want to calculate the probability using normal distribution then firstly we need to convert this data into the continuous form so in that case we need to add a continuity correction right uh, like we have one of the topic here which is uh, uh, normal distribution uh, approximate uh, approximation of binomial distribution to the normal distribution there also we need to add the continuity correction to convert the discrete data into the continuous form so here what is the criteria so we need to add and subtract the continuity correction so suppose i am considering delta is the continuity correction so a minus delta is less than x is less than a plus delta and what is delta delta is the uh, width between the two consecutive point of the data divided by 2 that is half of the width between the two consecutive points. basically the reason is when we draw the histogram right suppose that uh, i am starting from the data 0 and our next consecutive point is say 0 0.5 then the next value is 1.0 then next value is 1.5 so we'll draw the histogram like this here the frequency is say 2 for next point here the frequency is say 5 and so on right so when we are going to convert this data into the continuous form so basically we are joining the midpoint of this particular histogram and we join them to form a continuous line curve right so in that case uh, the first point will be extended like here the midpoint is 0.25 and if I extend this particular data to the previous one again it comes up to the midpoint of 0 to minus 0 0.5 also so it means that it is minus 0 0.25 so that's the reason so we need to add or subtract the continuity correction like if our starting point is 0 then the previous point will be uh, minus 0 0.25 and the next point for example I will cover up to uh, say 0 to uh, 1.5 then our next point will be 1.75 so we need to extend it up to there ok so this is the reason we need to add or subtract the continuity correction and when we calculate the probability then this can be written as in the form of cumulative distribution as probability x is less than a plus delta minus probability of x is less than a minus delta and then if i need to convert it into the normal distribution then we need to x minus mu upon sigma right so suppose that this is uh, the value capital a and this is the value capital b then this will be a minus mu upon sigma minus probability of x minus mu upon sigma is less than b minus mu upon sigma so what is a here here a is a plus delta and what is b here b is a minus delta right so if we look at this particular data in this case what is the width size 
here the width size is 0.7 so the half of 0.7 so in this case our continuity correction is 0.35 okay so what we need to do we need to add or subtract 0.35 so in this case the bin value is suppose it is e and in the upper limit we need to add 0.35 and in the lower limit we need to subtract 0.35 okay so this formula we are going to use here to calculate the normal probability so this is our x so in the upper limit we need to add the continuity correction that is 0.35 so for this data uh, because we have already done the descriptive statistics so the mean value is this 5.03 and the standard deviation is 1.95 and the because I need to find out the cumulative distribution function right so but because uh, I have selected this cell so I need to put here a dollar sign so that this value remains same so this will be the upper limit and for the lower limit I am going to copy this data paste it here and I am going to replace this positive sign with the negative sign right so this is the probability for the upper limit this is your x this is the mean value this is the standard deviation and because we are going to calculate the cumulative distribution function because of this formula okay upper limit probably we know that what is the cumulative distribution function cumulative distribution f of x is equal to probability of x is less than or equal to x so this is a co cumulative distribution function right so that's the reason upper limit minus lower limit so we use this formula upper limit minus lower limit so hence we can get the probability so if i extend this formula simply double click here so you can get all the probabilities here and if we extend the formula of sum here so you will find out here its approximate probability value comes out to be one only okay so now the next step is I want to analyze that either this distribution follow normal distribution or not. So I am going to select this data and I am going to sorry. So I am going to select this data and I am going to draw the plot. For that I go to the option of insert, go to the option of recommended chart and then either you can draw the uh, column graph or you can go to the line graph also so here the red line simply show here the normal distribution curve and this blue line is the approximate probability which we have calculated with the help of the proportion right proportion of the data so you will find out here that this data is approximately following normal distribution only okay so like we have a different way to demonstrate the same kind of curve so here we are given the point also right so you can select any kind of the curve so to get the more analysis of this particular data so it clearly shows that this data follow normal distribution right although the data which we have selected here it is a normal distribution okay but uh, generally if we want to perform the analysis on a data and the data size is large then we can check that either this data follow normal distribution or not uh, so with the help of this normal curve okay i hope you will get an idea that uh, how can we perform the uh, activity based on the normal distribution curve so there are many different kind of problems we can solve here like here we have calculated the probability for any specific value of x or I can also calculate the probability in an interval also but on the other hand if I want to calculate the value of x and the probability is known for example I am saying that the I want to calculate the value of x such that the probability of the normal distribution is say 0.95 and I want to find out what is the value of x here then also i can use uh, the excel command so the command is equal to this time we are going to use normal inverse okay so suppose that 
I am expecting that uh, the probability is known to us. For example, this is the probability. Okay, and uh, I am assuming that the mean of the distribution is say 5 and the standard deviation is 2. Then what is the value of x here? The value of x comes out to be 2.533. So this is basically the case if probability is x is less than x. For example, we know that uh, in the standard normal distribution, the probability that uh, x is less than 1.96, right? It is approximately equal to uh, 0.975, right? So, if I want to, this is the case of uh, standard normal variate, right? Probability z in the z table. When the value of z is less than 1.96, z means the value of mu is 0 and the value of sigma is 1. If we use that, then the value of z is less than 1.96, its probability is 0.975. If I want to verify this value, then I can calculate the inverse uh, normal distribution for this probability. So, I am using the command of say normal inverse. I am saying that the probability is say 0.975 and the mean value is 0 and the standard deviation is 1 and then you will find out here the approximate probability comes out to be 1.96 only ok and similarly if I say that uh, because uh, of the symmetry of the normal distribution curve the normal distribution curve is symmetric so if uh, it is symmetric about the origin so if this side I am saying that it will cover approximately 97 0.5% of the data it means that 25% of the data is here and because of this symmetry if I consider the 25% of the data so it means that the probability 0.25 it will be here at the point z equal to minus 1.96 because of this symmetry ok so if I want to verify this result so I can also use here again the command of normal inverse this time I am saying that the probability is 0.25, the mean is 0 and the standard deviation is 1. So, let us see that, ok, so wait, uh, it is 0.97, ok, 0.975 means it is 0 0.025, right, so here I need to calculate the probability for 0 0.025. So if I calculate the probability for 0 0.025, then the probability will be yes, it is minus 1.96. Okay. Okay, I think uh, that is enough for this particular activity part. But still, if you find out any doubt or any problem you are facing related to this particular activity, then you can simply comment. I'll try to provide you the solution for the same. Thank you. Have a nice day.